Hey everyone So in this video I'm going to be talking about my opinions on uh, On uh, Let's see what I want to talk about today <laughs> I forgot No it was something about I think it was something about Alright I'll give you an example Who which Do you guys like wine and spirits? You know Because um, I do And uh, you know I think the name Kind of communicates with you something you know i think there's a story of plato he wrote about sock he was having a dinner party or something like that and i like how they were saying um would you like to partake of this substance i don't know something to that nature you know so we communicate better and to me that seemed really sophisticated you just call it wine you know it makes you drunk and to me it kind of touches that um you know a lot of that um how can I say it? Ah, oh, man, because I, I just tell you straight up. So, a lot of the preparation involved behind consuming these substances are gone to being, um, you can say it's a ceremony, you know? I know I could lose some people when I use those words, but yeah, it's kind of like our dance or I'm going to try to, you know, something that was required. I'll give you another example. So, let's say that beer, that beer in, um, in the store, right? Well, you, how long did it take you to make it? And you could just say, oh, my phone. <laughs> you could just say, oh, I just went and bought it. Exactly, right? But back maybe like 100 years ago, even you could go even further, maybe a lot back, maybe like 1,000 years ago, there was a whole process, right? You had to get the, find a, a plant, right? A wheat, barley. Uh, in Mexico, they use, um, uh, I forgot what they call it, but to, to make uh, tequila, you know? Every, it, so it depends, you know, I'm pretty sure every continent had a, a plant that people saw that they could f ferment, right? It was a whole process, and there were probably songs, you know, there were probably a reason why, like, the changing of the equinox, the beginning of spring, you know, a man's uh, ceremony into a manhood, or a woman's ceremony into womanhood, you know, the birth of a child, the, you know, there was usually something very, some, very profound in someone's life, you know, so there was a... A reason behind this you know it wasn't just like hey let me go drink because i'm bored and it's a it's a wednesday night you know and i hate my life and <laughs> just drink my problems away you know I'm, if i could use any substance i can even tell you like marijuana you know what is marijuana you know it's something that um that it was very illegal here where i live in los angeles you know i remember in high school where um well i was introduced you know by some friends and I just remember being scared out of my mind, you know, but it was such a positive experience, you know, and I was like, even now thinking as an adult, you know, like, I could see where they're trying to go with that, you know, because there are people within our population who, unfortunately speaking, will consume something, right, will consume something like beer, and they will not how to know how to control it, because their, their type of personality they really need it. Uh, wow, so dark. <laughs> they really, really need it. Those structures in place. Maybe they're not even meant to ever consume these substances, you know? Because I do believe there's people who cannot consume them, you know? That for whatever reason, you get into it. It could be a whole discussion. But they, they, they didn't... Um, how can I say? They didn't... They're not meant to, for whatever reason in this lifetime, you know? I can't say why. There's infinite reasons why, you know? But, uh, yeah... And I could see why they make it illegal, right? Because some people drink too much beer. Like, whoa, you're only supposed to drink one, you know? You wasn't supposed to drink 20, you know? And, uh, yeah, it happens, man. Alcohol poisoning. And then, you know, people, um, unfortunately, I see this a lot. People smoking weed and then driving. So, I mean, <laughs> the chances are you're going to get in a car accident regardless of smoke that weed. But let's say something, they smell it or something. They're going to they're gonna get that negative association. So, so when people say I drive better when I'm a little tipsy or I drive better when I'm a little high and I like I'm pretty sure maybe there's like five percent of the five two percent of the population that does, you know? <laughs> and for that person you know, you never been caught, man. I'm pretty sure there's one person eighty years old, like, yep, I've been but that's probably one out of a billion. But um I digress. But I was what I was saying is that um you know, a lot of these substances that have such a negative connotation to them, I feel like uh under the right circumstances, under the right environment, with the right people and the right energy, you know, intent behind these, um, I think those substances could be a very beautiful experience, you know? 
under I think you have like a sitter somebody who sits who's not under these substances you know and maybe I'm talking about more even heavier ones right now because maybe ayahuasca or a uh, toad I forgot what that uh, I think it's this frog in Mexico right in New Mexico well in Mexico one of those southwest you know the southwest everybody somewhere around there and uh, I know if you consume these frogs they will you will uh, have a psychedelic trip right and I think you know under the right circumstances is like kind of like a beautiful experience you know with the right people and yes there's always that um that slight possibility you might die for whatever reason but hey you know you you get on that roller coaster and there's always that slight possibility you know you drive in that car you know like yeah this is and i know you can always find uh if you like i said people who have the opposite opinion as me who observe this video who critique it in a way where they could make a lot of sense and they could actually defeat me you know certain certain folks who have particular views on this subject you know they're not here so with them not being present i'm allowed to completely like bash on the other side so i want to always save my opinions you know because these are my opinions because at the end of the day i think we all have ignorances you know nobody fully sees the whole picture of, of the situation happening around us you know it's just the way it really has become you know i feel like um Unfortunately, you went off. Oh, what, what can I say? For? Maybe not. Because, you know, okay, let's say you're in the auditorium, right? And you're watching a play unfold. But you're sitting in one location. But if you look around you, there's a whole audience. And each person around you is a conscious individual with own opinions, their own views, their own upbringings, their own definitions. I like to call words like the words carry ghosts, right? Ghosts are transparent energy you can't, you can't, you're not conscious of. So every word that you, you, let's say for example, the word love, right? That word's such a ambiguous concept, you know? It captures so many things. I know in, in the Greek, uh, in Greek, I think, uh, I heard the Greeks have seven, seven words for love, you know? Like piety, and I think it's, I forgot what you call it, gia, something like that, right? And then they have another word for love, um, well, if you really want to, just search it up on YouTube. There's a good, uh, there's a lot of good videos on this. That's all I did, you know. I think these are interesting subjects, and uh, I wish I had more light. Maybe, let's see. Uh, let's see. Maybe I could put some light on this, right? <laughs> oh, man. Let's see. Oh. Well, <laughs> I guess you just got to hear me, you know. It's like an audio book, you know. But... I digress. <laughs> I think under the right environments, I think consumption of these substances could be a very beautiful experience. You know, I think they've done studies. People like empirical data. You could always. Uh, <laughs> I think that's nice when you, you could uh, cite studies. But uh, <laughs> sometimes it's good to have faith in things. But I, I cite studies for those of you, and then you can look it up. You know, because I'm not an expert in none of these things. These are just things that I remember um, very, very roughly. You know, and. Uh, but yeah, I know there's studies of people who are terminally ill, maybe Harvard or one of those Ivy League schools, you know? One of those schools, yeah. And they consume, I think, um, maybe LSD or some hallucinogen to that nature, you know? Or, um, or psychedelic mushrooms, you know? All these substances that, uh, you know, like... Uh, I mean, I could be transparent with you, you know? I have... Um, I have participated in these ceremonies myself, you know, and I feel that has contributed to my growth, you know, into my acquisition of knowledge, into my development of my own individual personality, you know, or the, the expression of it, you know, the coming out. <laughs> but, um, yeah. taking a walk late at night, <laughs> my favorite time. <laughs> There's a beautiful moon. I don't know if I'm pointing at it. I'm just kind of guessing. Where is that moon? Yeah, there you go. But, um, yeah, man. I hope in these changing times that we're currently in, you know, that you go and step outside and get some fresh air. You know, it's very beautiful. And, uh, I mean, I know it depends where you're at because I'm not... God damn, it's so dark. <laughs> well, just imagine I'm an audiobook. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Oh man, I love audiobooks. You guys should really uh, look them up on YouTube, you know? Like, I remember uh, I was watching Dave Chappelle and he talked about uh, this book he read by this guy named Iceberg Slim, you know? 
and he, that taught him about economics in the United States. And he's laughing at the audience. He's like, ah, ha, 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 You know, I love this. Dave Chappelle's so deep, you know. He was saying, you, you, it, you really want to know capitalism at its finest? You should read, you should read Iceberg Slim. Something to that nature. Because I'm not quoting it verbatim. You go see it yourself and, like, see what I'm talking about. You know, Dave Chappelle, Iceberg Slim. Teaches you about economics. And, yep. <laughs> and then teach me about economics. Uh, I, read, I read, I listened to the whole book. Which is like reading, you know, but much easier. I don't know, people have something about reading, like, you gotta read. No, of course you gotta read, you know, but I feel like reading is just an abstract representation of the si- of the sound that it's representing. So if you actually, like, I'm pretty sure every book, every book that you ever read is actually, a, there's a person or a group of people that collaborated to write, the, like, the Bible, right? <laughs> I love that book. Great book. But one of the best books, <laughs> or equal, if you, if you, like, Christian, like, equal to, I'll say equal to any book ever written on spirituality, you know? I don't I know hierarchies are complex <laughs> and they kinda get people confused. So. But yeah, you know. Look at the Bible. Who wrote the who wrote who wrote the Bible, you know? A bunch of people. And I'm pretty sure it was like an oral story, tradition behind it and everything, you know? So um I don't know. <laughs> Is it consume hallucinogens to come cons- to talk to God, you know, I think it's in the. Um, there's a one of the in the in the in the, in the, in the well, I'm gonna say Torah <laughs> because say Old Testament, but Torah, you know, there's a book. What's the book called? The book of uh, the book of Numbers or Into the Wilderness. I think that's the other way to call it, Into the Wilderness. So I know when the the Isra- Israelites were fleeing Egypt, I think they were lost in the desert, right? And I think um, you can look this up. There's a great video on this. Uh, wh- wh- who was another good YouTuber? What's his name? Ah, well, if it comes to me, I'll tell you. But, if you, I mean, if you really, really want to find out, too, just... I mean, I could tell you right now. I'm going to tell you, but, okay. So, it's the book of Numbers, right? Or Into the Wilderness. You look at the tribe, the Israel. The tribe of Israel were in the desert. What did they consume? Mana. Look it up. They consume mana, right? So, I feel like... I know, there's going to be that's such a <laughs> can of worms on opening, but, you know... Uh, you can see in the Buddhist temples that a lot of it was aligned with uh, the old monasteries, right? They had bud in it, you know? Why does, why when you buy bud, does it have like Buddha on it, you know? Or why like, like reggae music. To me, reggae music sounds like you're high, you know? If you want to, for people who are never going to smoke weed, just listen to reggae. <laughs> sounds like a, that reverb effect, right? And that's reggae music. But, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Especially the reverb, not the... The upbeat's nice. The upbeat, you feel it, you know? I, I feel like if you ever get really high, guys, you could feel reggae, right? It's like a very... It's like a heart, you know? But, uh... For those a little... Uh, I digress. So this is a good story. I know there's a guy. I forgot his name. But he, uh... He said, he, he said this. I gave the reggae to Marley. You know? And, um... What's his... He's still alive. He's actually really old. But he gave the reggae to Marley. God told him to give the reggae to Marley. Ah, uh, Lee Scott Perry. Something I'm, I gotta you gotta look it up and tell me. But Lee Scott Perry said, "I gave the reggae to Marley." Right? That's my really horrible Jamaican accent. But uh, I gave the reggae to Marley. <laughs> I'm not good at accents. Uh, maybe I am. See, maybe ah, law of attraction. I'm becoming better. All right. But yeah, man, he gave the reggae to Marley, man. I think Marley, but Marley did a great job with that gift he was given. But uh, that's deep, right? He said it. And people are going to look at him and laugh. Like, oh, this guy's crazy, man. He gave the reggae to Marley? What is that supposed to mean? But I thought that was beautiful, you know? But, uh, uh, yeah, you know, I like taking, this is my favorite time to walk, you know? And I used to walk all the time, even before Corona. And now that Corona's here, I feel like my walks are... I observe things, you know, differently. Different behaviors st- suddenly change. Because when I used to walk, damn, it was even more darker now. But uh, audiobook, guys, audiobook. You know, you can find Hamlet, Shakespeare. Well, I haven't found it myself, you know, but you can find uh, books on philosophy, you know. You can find commentaries. You can find opinions. You know, whatever subject you want to learn, you can find it on YouTube right now. You can learn how to tie a tie. You can learn how to make an omelet, you know. And I'll give you an example. 2007, I wanted to learn how to play guitar. 2004, and there was nothing available other than my 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 dying uncle. You know, rest in peace, Mateo Berna. You know, and nothing could replace those lessons. But um, there was nothing available. I had to get a teacher. You know, go to class. 
And look at it now. I can just go on YouTube and type in learning how to play guitar. And look, I'll learn how to play guitar. And the thing is, people need that push, need that slap, right? Because there are most people, most people, right? But there's that special person, that 5%, you know? Well, 96, 96.4% of people don't, they, they, they're not going to do it, you know? But this, it's not bad, though. It's just meant that we're meant to, out of the infinite things that exist, they were, meant, they were meant to do something else, you know? Like, I'm a musician. I invest so much of my my time into studying music theory and other very um, prolific musicians, you know? Like, I like Anthony Aguilar. I like Bob Marley, Ella Fitzgerald, Billie Holiday, you know? I like listening to Indian folk music, you know? Like, I like the, the Sena, right? Sena, whatever you call that, V-E-N-A, you know? I would just correct it because I call it a sitar. My, my, uh, <laughs> and this guy on YouTube was like, no, it's a Vena, V E N A. I'm, oh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. You know, that's a very humbling moment. <laughs> you think you know everything. Here you go. <laughs> Your whole life, 31 years old, you thought that was a sitar. No, it's actually called a Vena, V E V E E N A. Yeah, I want to, I want to buy one of those, man. It's not common for a Mexican American Honduran. To buy to be playing that instrument you know so it's like hey why not you know it's a beautiful instrument you could buy it for like a good one on amazon for like four hundred dollars <laughs> dude you know how hard that was back in the day come on man that's what kind of world do i live in where i could learn how to play the sitar there's like a, a like a a lady a professional sitar no not a sitar vina see it's so ingrained that name is so ingrained in my brain and just to find that i was wrong you know i think that's very uh, it's a beautiful thing you know uh you know i have to follow this guy named uh, sad guru and he's very smart very smart man it's spelled like sad s-a-d-h and then g-u-r-u right sad guru uh well, you could say G, but that's like, it's an honorific, and that's a very respectful word. He doesn't like it, so I just say Sadhguru. But, um, Sadhguru, right? And what I like, that he was given a, he does a lot of interviews, and for most of the time, he's very bright and articulate and very deep man, you know? And he breaks down con very difficult concepts for lay people. And I don't want, there's nothing wrong with being lay, you know? I'm a lay when it comes to, to um, human anatomy, you know? I don't know the words of every muscle in my body, you know? So I'm a lay person. Because there's some people would interpret that, hey, you just call me stupid. No, it's okay to be a lay person, you know? There's nothing wrong with being a lay person. I am a lay person to certain subjects, you know? Tell me how to hit a nail and I would, you just hear crickets, you know? You were like... <laughs> I've intentionally chosen to be ignorant, you know, because in order for you to be proficient in, in any art, you need to devote so much time to their infinite art. So you just, I'm a good musician, but I suck at drawing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but there are musicians who are good at drawing <laughs> and singing and dancing and they could draw. Those, those are rare, right? Look at Danny Glover, right? What is his name? Danny Glover. He's a, he's a comedian. He's a, this is America. Dun, 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 dun. What is that song? This is America. Uh, I forgot its name, but I know Danny Glover, a comedian. He changes names depending. I know he's also an actor and he he raps, right? Yeah, that's amazing, right? There are people born with all those abilities, and there are people who think they have none of them, but they actually have one of them, at least in them. We all got one, man. We all got one. <laughs> we just don't realize they're even using it, right? Right. But I digress. So it's talking about these substances, right? So I think under the right environments, with the right sets of people and the right circumstances, and you know, I don't know, it's, maybe it works for you. Maybe, I, I, there's no rules to this, you know? I'm just giving you my, my opinion, right? My unfiltered opinion, because you guys are just hearing me talk, you know? And if there was someone here, I really would enjoy that, because that way we could have a dialogue, right? And I really enjoy speaking to people who would disagree with me, you know? Like, oh, this whole time, this guy, this motherfucker got everything wrong. He's an idiot, right? Well, don't call me an idiot, even if you think that. Maybe you could be respectful. Like, you know what? I disagree with you, right? Because if you call somebody an idiot, that's just insulting their character. Just say you disagree with them, you know? Maybe they're not idiots. Maybe they're just an idiot in that particular instance, you know? They're showing, hey, I call it a sitar. And this guy called me, he, he even put a smiley face. Because <laughs> he... 
Because <laughs> he was he was wrote this as a comment. He is a colavina in my dumbass, you know, my Mexican American Honduran dumbass. I don't know shit about this, you know that I see him bajo quinto, right? Playing Norteño music, right? I know that, you know. And I know most people don't even know what a bajo quinto is. I know the guy, he's Indian, he probably don't know what Norteño music is, right? What is that? <laughs> oh man, my Indian accent sucks. <laughs> Oh, I don't really want to get into it. People think I'm going to be racist, but I ain't white, so. <laughs> Isn't that sucks? You know, I love Apu. You know? Look, I have a friend. I got offended one time because he tried to do, he's white and he did a Mexican impression, right? But the reason why he got offended, because he did a bad job at it, you know? If he was to really get a good Mexican impression, you know, I'd be fucking like, hell yeah. Hell fucking yeah. Hey, way. <laughs> hey, way. You know, like the new Hovenists, the, the young Mexicans that are saying, hey, wait, they don't, or like, you know, the, but you know what? I even think that's shifting, you know, maybe that was, I think <laughs> words are like architecture, you know, in each generation, like architecture, you could see what year you, because of the style. Oh, this is something from the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000, 2010 to 2020, right? So just like what arch physical architecture just, and then, Words you can see, like I use the word dude a lot, right? But maybe in a way that's different than other people, you know? For people who don't know how to use dude, they pronounce the D in the middle really hard. They say dude, dude, right? It's because it's D U D E, but there's no, there, we don't articulate uh, changes in the pronounce. See, I'm not a linguistic major. So I wish that I wish I was at this point, but you could, I'm pretty sure you could find a video. I haven't even found it, but etymology on the word do, right? The study. And duder, right? I don't know, dude. <laughs> and I, you always say the word, you know, you know, you know. I remember when I lived in South Africa, I, I remember I hear people going, yebo, yebo, yebo. <laughs> I was like, is that your version of you know? <laughs> I love that, man. Yebo, I think that means yes. Haibo, haibo, I don't even know, man. This, I hope my, my Isizulu. South African friends are not laughing at me right now. Like, oh, this idiot. Remember, I'm Umlungu, right? <laughs> I'm Umlungu. Oh, man. I think that called it. What does that translate? Man who, men who shoot fires from a stick because of their guns or some that shit like that. But, uh, so look, I remember in South Africa learning about, uh, right when you get married, and I could be very wrong. I, this was like 10 years ago and this was a random conversation I had on the, on, a, on public transportation. What do you call those those uh, those mini buses? Maybe you guys don't even use them anymore. I don't know. Maybe you still do. But I was taking them to work one day and this random person, just, we were just talking and they told me about the etymology of the word umlungu, right? You have to hit those tones. I know I'm not hitting those tones, but uh, at least I said the word umlungu, right? But a uh, magician or something like that, you know? But uh, they were just telling me the word it means that you know so yeah man i'm just talking you know guys uh sometimes i like i just like hearing people talk you know i'm not gonna lie i listen to joe rogan <laughs> i don't even agree with him you know i don't think he's a bad guy you know he's the kind of guy i think it'll be cool to like hang out with who else do i listen to people i should shout out you know uh <laughs> a lot of a lot of people you know a lot of you know <laughs> i'm trying to think <laughs> Who can I mention? I won't get in trouble. <laughs> uh, no. Thank Grace. I guess everybody listens to something, right? <laughs> uh, so yeah, finally ran out of things to say. That how much many minutes? How many minutes did I speak? Twenty-three minutes and fifty seconds. Now I am no more. You know, this is like that moment when you're sitting at the table with your best friend for you know your whole life and it's silence. At least for me, 